Hallelujah. Amen. Who did not get a handout? Uh, you need to bind it, yeah? Just put it in there in order to be rushed to get you all the time. Anybody else didn't get one? Yeah. Right, you've all got one. Oh, yeah, take your seats. Amen. Mike was on the pulpit here. Where is he going, Jordan? There was one here. Yeah, anybody see it? Rachel. Right, we're going to turn up and talk about demonology, spiritual warfare. Now, most people always like to talk about Jesus, and as, as rightly, we're in a Christian church. But when we start talking about devils, people always get a little bit uncomfortable. Actually, some people even will leave the room when you start talking about devils. And uh, they get uncomfortable. Some people might manifest all kinds of strange, uh, uh, you know, manifestations, etc., and the reason being is this, is because the Bible says, one time Jesus said, let the wheat and let the towers, which is the weeds, grow together. And at the end of the world, God will separate the good from the bad. Do you understand? So I'm very sorry to disappoint you, but there are devils in the church. Devils come to church. They will sit in the church and they will wait for their opportunity to cause trouble. They may not do it straight away. They may come in, they may get baptized in Jesus' name. They might even pretend to speak in tongues. Amen. But do you know how you truly know a Christian of God? Don't uh, shout out, please put your hands up. How do you truly know a Christian of God? Anyone can tell me. The fruit of the Spirit. Can anyone tell me what the fruit of the Spirit is or a couple of things? Love. No. Love. Hold on. One at love. Mercy. Faith. Mercy. Joy. Mercy. Joy. Joy. Long suffering. Self control. Self control. Goodness. Goodness. You know. Goodness. Temperance. Yeah. Discipleship in where you you you, you, you you discipline yourself. Amen. These are the fruit of the spirit. You cannot tell if someone's uh, a Christian by them speaking in tongues, because the devil speaks in tongues too. Yes, he does. You cannot tell them coming to church. Amen. You cannot tell them coming to church because the reason why the devil comes to church as well. Right. Amen. Amen. You cannot tell about that, praise the Lord. But the only way you can tell is by their fruit, and the only way you can find out the fruit takes time to observe and watch people. This is why you always need to be on guard. 24 hours a day, even in the church. Never put down your guard, ever. Only a fool does that. A fool turns around and says, oh, they're Christian, I must uh, trust them. Just because somebody says they're Christian doesn't mean they're a Christian. Why? Because the scripture says that the devil can portray himself to be what? An angel of light. Angel of light. In other words, he will act apostolic, walk apostolic, talk apostolic, or Christian, whatever, yeah? But the only way you truly see them is by their fruit. <laughs> no other way. People get angry quick at you, lie against you, gossip against you. You know, uh, borrow money you don't pay back, uh, uh, hate you, uh, slander you. That cannot be the Holy Ghost. Yet they'll speak in tongues in the altar. And behind the... <coughs> ah, it's true. I'm being honest. And that's how you truly will recognize them by their fruit. Now, some, some devils will be very good at uh, hiding it, but sooner or later... It will come out. They cannot hide it, do you see? It has to come out. Just like an alcoholic, sooner or later, you will catch them out because of their breath, because they, they're driving home drunk or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Sooner or later, they will reveal themselves. And it's the same thing. Now, we're going to go to two scriptures and then go to the handouts. Uh, first, we need to stand. Uh, not stand, sorry. Open our Bibles. Sorry. If you've got a Bible, please open it to the book of... Isaiah. Why even bother studying about the devil anyway? What's the point in still studying about the devil? Some people would say, well, we shouldn't study about the devil because we're giving him glory. We should study about Jesus all the time. We shouldn't even men. Why should we study about the devil? 
So we're not naive. And that's yeah. But the, the other thing is, you cannot fight an enemy if you don't know your enemy. And can I tell you now, bluntly, there are demons out there who are scheming to put you in hell. And if you don't believe that, you're naive. They are planning, they are awake 24 hours a day, and their job is to discourage you, to stop you reading the scripture, to stop you praying, to stop you coming to church, to stop you listening to your pastor, to stop you having a prayer meeting in your house, to stop you uh, 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 doing anything for God. They will work 24 hours a day, every day, to obtain that. You have to sleep. They don't. Mm -hmm. They don't sleep. Their plan, manipulate, and prepare to pull you because they go into hell. There is no demon can be reformed and repent. They're all going to hell. They know they're going there already and they want to take you with them. There is a battle on this world between dark and good, light and no light, yeah? Evil and good, etc. And the evil, if God, if God is using me to, look at us, we're going out outreaching today to try and win souls to the Lord, are we not? We're doing this to try and win souls to the Lord. You practice so if a guest will come, they'll be touched by the Lord. Am I correct? See, you've done all this. What do you think the devil's doing then? If you're doing all this to attract one soul, what is the devil doing to get you out? And if you don't admit that, you're naive to his works. He's working more than you are to try and stop you, amen, from being in this house of God. I know it already. And that's why you've got to understand who he is. So then when you understand who he is, when somebody comes along at one hour before church time and say, oh, by the way, my leg's hurting. Could you please help me and drive me over there, please? And, and suddenly you're doing all their work and then you've missed the church. You know who you listen to. You were trapped by the devil. Because he didn't want you in the church. Why not turn around and say, let's go to the church and let pastor pray for it. <laughs> or I'll put you in a taxi and, and you can go to the hospital. I agree, if their leg's hanging off, yeah, that's worth taking them. But if they've got a little pain in their leg, but isn't it funny, they always show up on church day. Not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no other day, but always church day. And many of us have the excuse and say, oh, Pastor, I couldn't be here because, because, because. But Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday was all okay. But it's always church day, prayer day, Bible study day. No other days. Now, if you don't admit that to yourself, you will be deceived over and over and over again. Do you understand? You know, like a kid, you know, they make the same mistake over and over and over and over and over again. The fact is, we have to understand these things are happening. So, if we turn to the scripture very quick in uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11. Amen. Isaiah 14, verse 11. It says here, thy pomp is brought down to the grave, the noise of thy bars, the worm is spread unto thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thy fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man? that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms. There are people now in the Christian church, they will go to hell. And when they go to hell, they will look at the devil and say, is this the one I listen to and stop me from coming to the service? Because he's pathetic. And when you see him in hell, you will say, is that the one that calmed me? Is that the one who put the lies into my mind? You will weep because he's nobody. The nations will look at it and say, this is the one who caused World War I and II. This is the one who caused the Holy Wars. This is the one who wiped out six million Jews. This is the one we listen to. He's nobody. But he's got one great weapon 
tool to manipulate your mind. And the only way you can tell the devil when he's working, how would you know if he's really working it on your mind? How can you truly know? Again, by the fruits, but by the word. Now, we know Jesus fought the devil. The first person to fight the devil or to have an in, a, a, a confrontation with the devil or a, a discussion with the devil was who? Eve. Well done. It certainly was. Good girl. It was Eve. And when Eve had a, a, a talk with the devil, who won? The devil. The devil won. Why? There was no written word at that time. There was only one commandment. You shall not eat of the knowledge of the good and evil. That was it. Every other tree and everything else. Did you notice that? Before that happened, I'm sure Adam and Eve was walking around in the garden. They were eating from all the trees. They never bothered looking at that tree until somebody talked to them. Just like we will go on through our life, we'll never bother thinking about it until the devil says, don't, don't, don't. You never thought about church until you came into here, some of you. Now you're coming to church, and what's the devil telling you? You're too tired. You can't read your Bible. You can't do this yet. But before you ever met God, or God called you, you never had that, did you? You never. Be honest, you never. But now he's working full time. Why? Because he's just doing the same as he did to Eve. Then who was the next person to encounter the devil? Jesus. You know, on a confrontation in the wilderness. Do you remember? And what did Jesus do? Jesus never entertained. He said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. All right, yeah, okay. So the devil goes, all right, all right, all right, all right. Jump over there. It is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. If you bow before me, I'll give you all the kingdoms, all the jobs, all the girlfriends, everything, the nice car, the nice house, everything. Yeah, you just bow before me. It is written. Worship the Lord thy God and him only. You see, the devil always said, sister, it is written. He never used his own mind, Jesus, to outwit the devil. Always, it is written, it is written, it is written. Some people, they believe they know God without reading the Bible. That's pathetic. I'm sorry, I'm being blunt in this message. That's why you're to pay to get in the message. You, get, you pay for me to insult you. Amen. Amen. I'll pay for it. Amen. There are people who sit in, in the church and believe that they can be a Christian without studying God's word. And that's a lie from the devil. That's the devil lying to you. Because he knows if you don't study the word, you don't know him. And if you don't know him, he will keep talking to you. He will keep talking to you all you like. And let me tell you, he's a great talker. He's a great talker because the Bible said he was lifted up, his pomp, he was, you know, he, and he is an orator. You know, Hitler, Hitler was possessed by demons, we know that, and Hitler was so good at talking. The minute he walked, walked and talked, everyone, hello, oh, Father, hey, hi, hey, hi, all like that. They went crazy. And the devil is the same thing. He's great. He's the best salesman, man. Amen. Okay, let's go back to the verse here. It says here, made the world to tremble, verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness. What does he mean by it? He's going to destroy all the cities of the world. Therefore, that opened up the house of the prisoners, all the kings of the nations, even all them lie in glory, everyone in his house. But thou art cast out thy grave like an abominable branch, and as a remnant of those that are slain, thou with a sword and go down to the stones of the pit. Anyway, you can read that all the way to verse 24 later. Okay, but we can see that Lucifer had a high position in heaven. He was the son of the morning star, but he wanted to exalt himself above God. And when you try to exalt yourself above God, be prepared to go down on the elevator. God is God. Before anything, there was God. After everything, there'll be God. There's no way about it. You cannot, amen, you cannot, can you get please? <laughs> Amen. I don't mean to be rude, but it, it will distract other people. You know, that God is God. Praise God. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can never get higher than God, so you might as well just bow now. So this is why when you decide to give yourself to God, you cannot give bits to God. You've got to give everything to God. Praise the Lord. So here, if we quickly turn to Isaiah again, another uh, uh, portion of Scripture. Uh, sorry, not Isaiah, I just read that. Ezekiel 28, verse 14. 
I'll just read a couple, then we're going to go to that one now. I just want, we could be here all night reading scriptures about the devil, but uh, I just want to bring a couple to you who he was. In uh, Ezekiel 28, verse 14, it says, Thou art the anointed treble, cherub, thou covered, and I have set thee, so thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou was walked up and down in the midst of the stones of the fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou went, was created till sin and iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of my merchandise, thou have filled the midst of the earth, the violence thou was sin thereof. I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted the wisdom because of the reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, and they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled uh, thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy sins and iniquity, by the iniquity of thy trafficking, wherefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, I shall devour thee, I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Listen to what it says, all them that behold thee and all those that follow him, his, your leader, if you're a follower of the devil in here, because I don't know really what you're doing, your leader will be burned in ashes. I just want to tell you that right now. So you are following a leader that will be burned in ashes and he can give you nothing. If you follow Jesus, you will get eternal life. But if you follow the devil, you are going to burn in ashes. That's exactly what the Bible says. That's his end. Amen. Anybody got any questions at the moment? Okay. So there's many scriptures, you know, the Bible said, uh, Jesus said he saw the lightning coming and Satan coming down. We know the devil is working in the church. He's working always to divide the church. Always remember, if any pastor or leader or member tries to divide you and say it's from God, that's from the devil. It is. Because the devil wants division. He always wants to, it doesn't matter if the pastor is right or wrong, or the leader is right or wrong, or the praise singer is right or wrong. It is not your job to destroy them. That's God's job. God said, I lift up, I bring down. Amen. If there's somebody in the church who is wicked and evil, God will remove them. Not by your hand. This is David could have killed King Saul three times and became king, but he didn't. The anointed blood will not be on my hand. Amen. It won't be on my hand, praise the Lord. And so we have to realize sometimes we have people in the church we're not happy with. Uh, they don't like us. We don't like them. They make us unhappy. Uh, they're irritating. Some people are so irritating. They irritate you all the time. You know already they're not genuine. You know this. You know that. Oh, listen, don't judge them. Don't try to get rid of them. Don't try to speak them out of the church. Let God do all of that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's God's job. Hallelujah. That's not my, it's not, you know, I may have a bigger job than you have because I'm your pastor. But the point is, your job is not to try and discredit or destroy any leader in the church. That's a dangerous thing to do. Everybody that I've ever seen that rebelled against the pastor or the church is now out and backslidden. They're backslidden. Why? Because God will never, never, never bless rebellion. Never. You may think you're doing okay at the line, but you know the saints will come with you, or, or you know, you'll uh, uh, put somebody down, or what, and it looks like you're doing well, but in the end, you will be brought down. Praise God. Because that is the spirit of our enemy. Praise God. Because the enemy wants to divide everybody against each other. He doesn't want people to pray for each other. He doesn't want people to lie. He doesn't want people to forgive. He wants you to walk around with tons of bitterness and hatred. Because when you're walking around like that, you're fulfilling his plan. Just like if you're walking around with forgiveness and love and kindness, you're fulfilling Jesus' plan. Amen. Amen. And some of us don't like that, do we? We don't like it because they hurt us so much. I want to see him crushed. Amen. If you ever get that attitude, I want to see my head crushed, you know already that's not the Holy Ghost. You need to lay hands upon yourself and rebuke yourself in Jesus' name. Because some people have devils sitting on their shoulders, just whispering them in there. You hate him. You hate her. Oh, yeah, I hate her. You want to kill her. You want, I want to kill her. Yeah. I'm, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. They're sitting on the shoulder, man. Sometimes you stop and go, Get my that. Get them off. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Denomination. 
demonology, spiritual warfare. In this session, we'll try to do it if we can. We will not deal with Satan, but look at his servants, generally referred to as demons. What are demons? These are angels who fell with Satan, some of which are bound with others are still loose. Psalm 78 verse 9, can somebody find that? And can somebody find James 2 verse 19? And can somebody find Mark, Matthew 17 verse 18? Okay? And when I come to it, I ask you to stand up and read if you found it. What are they like? They are real personalities. Demon spirits have all the characteristics of real personalities. They possess both will and intelligent, intelligence and act according to their evil natures. Okay, James 2.19. Who got that? Please stand up and read it. James 2.19. Somebody? Nobody? James? Sister? Stella? Thank you. You believe it and that there is one God. You do well. Even the demon, demons be, <coughs> believe it and tremble. Yeah, now, it doesn't say the de 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 demons believe it and have a party. It says the demons believe it and tremble. Why do they tremble in one God? Because the demons have power, but they know their power is limited. Just like some of us, we tremble at our employer. We tremble, we do. If our boss walks in, hey, 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 we do, because we know they have the power to sack us and change our whole life. Let's be honest. And the same thing is with these demons. The demons know that Jesus has the power, God has the power to obliterate them. Just like that. They tremble. Amen. Okay, the next one, Psalm 78, verse 49. Who found that? Um, yeah, the one. Verse 49. Um, he casts upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Yeah, evil angels. Now, what does that scripture say? He sends evil angels among them. Why? Because they are rebelling. Do you know who gets demon activity in their lives? Is the people who are speaking against God and their servants. The demons are sent to come into your life and mess up your life. That's why the biggest gossiper in the church, if you know who they are, usually have trouble all the time. They're never at peace. Trouble in their work, trouble in their home, trouble in their family, trouble in their banking, trouble in their money, trouble anywhere. It's like their whole life is totally troubled. Why? Because God sends demons into their life and messes it all up. Because they will not stop talking against God. It's better just to be quiet. Remember the Bible said, stand still, and I know I'm God, yeah? We could add a bit. I'm not adding to the word of God, but sometimes we could say, shut up. Shut up and know God is God. Just keep your mouth shut. Amen. It's much safer. Do you know why? Because the minute you speak something out, you cannot put that word back in again. And God has heard that word. He's heard the word. The minute you said, the minute you turn around, sister shows up there. That's it. It's out. You can't get the word back and put it back in. You either repent instantly and God will forgive it. But if what if you don't? What if you suddenly get a phone call and you forgot about that? Then that's gone up into the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? Isn't it? Yeah. The next scripture I asked for somebody to get me was Matthew 17, verse 18. Go on, brother. And Jesus rebuked the devil, he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Yeah, so here we can see the devils, right, come amongst us to attack us because of our rebellion. They can possess us. Now, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, can you get possessed with the devil if you're filled with the real Holy Ghost? No. No, no. you cannot, it's impossible, but you can be oppressed. Amen. There's a difference between possession and oppression. Oppression is when you are filled with the Holy Ghost and suddenly you go back into the world and live sin again and, 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 live, and you love the magic and you love to entertain the devil and everything and the demons will come on you. They can't get in you because the Holy Ghost is still there because God says, remember I preached on Sunday. And by the way, I preached last Sunday in Victoria a good message on Satan, which is now on YouTube, so you can go watch it. It's on YouTube already, okay? But I was preaching that, you know, you can uh, uh, be oppressed by the enemy to where you do his bidding and you do his work. 
Okay? Don't worry about that. You do his work even though you don't realize you're doing it. It's actually mine. Can you answer it? Go out there. Joy. Okay. You can, uh, you know, be oppressed. <coughs> now, you've seen these programs, right? Uh, you know, like uh, Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. <laughs> Have you seen when they put them into a casket full of cockroaches? The cockroaches don't come in the mouth, but their body is full of them around, and they act according to the cockroaches. So that's the same thing as we could be filled with the Holy Ghost, right? But we're covered in demons, so we are acting the fear. Do you understand? Why? Because we're drawing near to evil. We're drawing near to evil. Amen? Can you say amen? amen. amen. Devils possess people as well. That's why when everybody comes to the church here and they walk in the door and say, I'm a Christian, I'm a, the Bible said, try the spirits. See if they be from God. You need to know there are people who walk in your house filled with devils. Listen, I will not let anyone stay in my house. I will not let just anybody stay in there. Honestly. Because you don't know what's coming through that door. You just don't know. You might say, oh, well, they look friendly. I don't care how they look. The fact is, you don't know their true motive. You don't have that power. God is the one who looks at the hearts, not you. So you need to, before you, you need to pray. You need to go and pray and say, Lord, is it okay, this person? Is it okay, Lord? You know, because you don't know. You could get somebody in there that's really nice, but in bed, they're satanic worship, you know? Do you know what I'm saying? They've got little idols and, everything, and that curse is being brought into your house. It is. Question. Yes. I have a question for huh? because um, there was, uh, I just want to raise it because there was one thing someone said, uh, it could be, there's also, uh, they said, uh, you have to welcome strangers, yeah. but you may be entertaining um, angels. Yeah, well, welcome strangers. Okay, so let's explain that. The Bible said, welcome strangers. But then the Bible goes on to say, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Does that mean the Bible then is contradicting itself? No. Ah, what it, no, what it means is this. Your home is your church. If you have children, the protection of your children, okay, is more important than welcoming a stranger. Jesus said, do you remember the poor? Jesus turned around and said, the poor you'll always have with you. But let this woman give this, because she was bought the alabaster bottle, do you remember? And so we'll always have the poor. But God isn't saying you have to help everybody, every poor person, because you don't have that power to do that. Just like us, we're a church, we collect offering here. We can't go out and feed everybody in this town. We just don't have the, you know. But when it comes along, we can entertain them by feeding them, but we don't need to let them in our house, take over our room, Give them a credit card. You know, we don't know who they are. You say like the strangers, yeah. But we, when a stranger comes, you need to give the basic need. The basic need is food, but you don't need to let them in because you don't know who they are. You know what? The funny thing is, some of us, we open our doors to anybody and then we cry to God when they turn around and hurt us. Do you know why that is? It's because we never had the discernment or the wisdom at the beginning. Amen. We think we're doing God's service. Yeah. You know the Bible says that, this is for the Roman Catholic Church by the way, the Roman Catholic Church and the Inquisition massacred more than three million people during the Dark Ages and they thought they were doing God's service. And yet they were doing the service of the devil. Even Jesus said they will think they are doing God's service. Amen. Just like us, sometimes we want to help the whole world and we think we're doing God's service. And God is saying, listen to me, I want you to be wise. The Bible said, try the spirits and see if they be from God. Amen. See. Amen. Check them out first. And that's easy to do. You can, if somebody comes to your door, you can say, come back in an hour. Go downstairs and pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, if this person is going to threaten me, hurt me, damage me, destroy me, I want you to place something in my heart. I want to help that person. Do you believe God is going to be angry when you're asking his permission to check? I don't think so. I think he will actually be happy. Thank you for coming to me, child, and asking. That's a wise Christian. Amen. So we need to realize that, yes, we need to help people. We need to help strangers. And by the way, if a stranger walks to me upon the street and says, give me a bag of chips, I'll buy them a bag of chips. Mm -hmm. 
you know. But if a stranger on the street said, take me down to your bank account, clear up everything, <laughs> take my, give me your house and everything, come on. Yeah. Are you going to do that bomb? No. How do you know? It could have been an angel bomb. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? You've got to have, you see the devil, remember, the devil uses the scripture too. Yeah, that's right. He will use the scripture and turn around and say, hey, you need to entertain strangers. Remember, Jesus said that same problem. If you truly be the son of God, jump off here. Because it's written, the angels will catch you. You see, then Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord. So the devil was using the scripture, and then Jesus was balancing off that scripture with balance. And this is why you must attend your Bible study, so you know scripture and you understand. Amen. If somebody walks to you, Brother Bong, and says, Bong, let me 40 quid, please, and you're touching your heart, I give you, and then you see them in the pub drinking, smoking with that 40 quid, do you think you'll be happy? No. You've heard, you went out and earned that money hard, and all that demon has told them to go and blow the lot into a pub and drink the lot away. That's why. Now, some people say, well, drinking isn't harmful. It isn't harmful. It isn't. How many people are in the graves because of drinking? How many families have lost their loved ones because they drove home and smashed their car or ran over a kid? It is. And yet, they, they'll be, they won't admit that. They'll say, no, it's just okay. Listen, at the end of the day, these things are designed to try to destroy you. Because if they can kill you before your time, straight down you go. What do you think it's all designed? What do you think heroin's designed to do? Kill you. All these drugs are designed to kill you. Because if you are, die without God, you're finished. That's right. Yeah. This and this is what I'm saying. People are ignorant. They don't realize there's a war going on for your soul. And the enemy's throwing everything he can at you. Drink, drink, drink. Gamble, gamble, gamble. Do your, do your, do Come on, come on. You know, Sister Chris has a friend in her university just committed suicide in the universe, jumped off the roof. Why did we, why did they jump? We don't know. Could it be because of a girlfriend or boyfriend? Could it be, what? we don't know. They could have got drunk the night before because they had a girlfriend, lo left them, do you know what I'm saying? And the devil said to their mind, it's all over, it's all over. It's not worth living anymore. Yeah, you're right. Ah! <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But if that person would have gotten their knees and said, God, please take away this pain right now. Because Jesus is the comforter. You see? They would have been delivered from that situation. They may not have been delivered from the pain and the hurt, but they'd have been delivered from suicide. Amen. To live another day. Do you know what I'm saying? But this is what, you see, if the devil can get you to kill yourself, that's it. There is no purgatory. Once you're dead, that's it. Don't ever believe this. That's a Catholic religion, and it's totally wrong. Purgatory is the biggest deception of all. It's what tells you if you die in if you die with sin, don't worry, we can pray you out of hell. Rubbish. Once you're dead in sin, you are dead indeed. There's no way out. Number three, let's go to number three. They are servants of Satan, these are demons, having chosen to side with Satan in the rebellion. They became his slaves. Obligated to his will, thus the choice they made was really Satan's, and through self-will they became slaves to his will. Number four, they are numerous. On one occasion a demon admitted to Jesus that his name was Legion, for we are many. As God has legions of good angels at his command, so Satan has legions of demons at his command. Note that only a third of angels fell. Therefore, in principle, there are twice as many angels as opposed to fallen angels. In other words, uh, if there was a hundred billion angels, that means 350 billion, 100, yeah, 350 billion would have rebelled. Amen. Now, does everybody here believe in a guardian angel for you? Well, there's no way in the scripture that says it. I don't believe in a guardian angel. I believe in angels. Because the Bible said those that fear the Lord, the angels encamp around them. That's more than one, Joshua. More than one. You can have your own single angel. Me, I have a whole camp of them camping around me. They're about eight, foot, eight foot tall. Well, nobody knows. How do you know that? You see, all these are tradition. Again, you've got to go by scripture. The scripture doesn't say, when I see angels, some of them are this big. In my mind. Only like that. Amen. We don't know. 
Usually the people that have had an encounter, I've seen an angel before, I've actually seen more than one. I will just tell you the one, I saw an angel, she was this tall, and she was about 900 years old. That's the only way I can explain it. She was so old, she was more, uh, she was more wrinkled than a, uh, what do they call them, a raisin. She was ultra, and she was like this, in the back, you know, like that, you know. And, uh, you know, God, you see, God can manifest any way he likes. Listen, he spoke through a donkey, praise the Lord. He can be fire on people's heads, amen. He manifests himself in the river, you know, at the same time we hear the voice of God, we see the dove coming down, we see Jesus, three manifestations there of God all at the same time. You see, this is a trouble. A lot of people, they restrict God's power. They think, oh, God, God can't do that. There must, be a, there must be more. God can do anything. Amen. And if you, don't, if you don't accept that, then you'll always have a problem in the Bible. Always. Praise God. Okay, so there are many kinds of demon spirits under Satan's control. And their names signify their evil work. Demons are totally and morally depraved in character. And there are degrees of wickedness in them. The following are examples of the names and natures. Now, we're not going to go for all of it. We'll go a few. But, for example, devils, evil spirits or servants of devils, evil spirits, unclean spirit. This title is used to describe their impure nature. You can turn to the scriptures later. That's why you've got our hand out. Dumb spirits, spirits where people cannot talk. Blind and dumb spirits, deaf and dumb spirits, lying spirits, spirit of infirmity, Spirit of divination, spirit of fortune telling, seducing spirits. Now, seducing spirits isn't always at a uh, SEX, you know, I'm not going to say in front of the kids. It's not always about SEX. A lot of people say that, no. Sometimes seducing spirits seduce you out of the church. Do you know what I'm saying? In other words, there's something better than this church. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, we can go to the boot fair every Sunday. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I remember we lost one girl who was boot fair fanatic. She was seduced out of the church to go to boot fair. Every Sunday she's in the boot fair. Buying, buying, buying. And do you remember? You remember who? I think you remember. Don't mention. But you go to her house and her house was dark. Yeah. yeah, do you remember? Dark. Why? Because the spirit that she was entertaining, right, not only made her buy loads of stuff, but the house became dark. All the darkness, you know, the place was full of stuff. The windows were all dirty, the drapes were drawn, and the minute you walked in the house, you could feel the evil. You could feel it. Why? Because the seducing spirit seduced her into shopping all the time at boot fairs. Shut the door. You may think, there cannot be a spirit of boot fair. No, there isn't a spirit of boot fair, but the seducing spirit seduced it into the boot fair. Do you understand? To keep shopping every Sunday. Amen. So, seducing spirits, lunatic spirits, epileptic and suicidal spirits. Suicidal spirits. These are people who always turn around and say, I'm going to commit suicide. Come and come over to my house. And you're always running after them, but they never commit suicide. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like they've got you controlled because every time they call you up, you know, in the middle of the night, oh, please, can you come over? I'm going to commit suicide. And you rush over, spend hours with them and stuff. Then you come back, it's all over, praise God. Yeah. And then the next week, I'm going to commit suicide, I'm going to commit. And you rush up and it's like back and forth, back and forth. It's a spirit. It's a spirit because what it wants to do is manipulate you and control you. Now, can I be honest with spirits? Spirits never truly show their full intention straight away. They start to hook you in. Do you understand? Do you understand? Like wizardry. Wizardry will not give you the whole lot at the beginning. It will start with Harry Potter, Twilight. Do you understand? And as you get more and more, then palm reading. And do you know, as you get more and more, then you start dressing like a witch, you know, and acting like a witch. It starts gradually. It always starts gradually. Amen. Okay? Uh, what about Antichrist spirit? Spirit of the world, spirit of fear, and the familiar spirit. Praise the Lord. Okay? What about their activity? Activity of demons and divers, but is best summed up in John 10.10. 10. Could somebody turn to John 10.10 10 and read that? Praise the Lord.
John 10, 10. Sorry, sister. Then they say, I think I'm not going to stay with the king and to destroy God. I found that that he might have a habit more than one. Yeah, so if the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. Now, what does that mean in the reality? Think about it. The thief comes to kill and destroy. These spirit attack men spiritually, morally, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Okay? They attack the spirits spiritually. That's to your walk with God. They attack you morally. In other words, they want you to do stuff against your own body. Mentally, they mess up your mind. Physically, they may give you some physical and emotion. The following is a list of their activities. They oppose God's ministers. Let's turn to uh, is that, uh, Matthew 13, verse 19. Now, if any of you want to be a pastor in here in the future... It's a good calling, and there's nothing wrong with it, but be prepared for lots of opposition. I'm telling you, I have more people hate my guts than you can ever believe. And you might turn around and say, they're not pastor. No, you're such a nice guy, because I am a nice guy, yeah? Yes, pastor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least one person said yes. <laughs> the rest of you are all quiet. Praise the Lord. The fact what I'm saying is demons oppose the pastor. They will oppose the minister. Why? If they can get the pastor discouraged and give up, you know what I'm saying? If the pastor will give up, praise God, then the, uh, the witness for God in that town, amen, is finished. The witness for God in that town is finished, do you see? And so many souls will be destroyed. And so, of course, the leader is always attacked first. So, let's turn to that scripture, Matthew 13, verse 19, if you've got it. When anyone hear the word of the kingdom, and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catch away that which was sown in his heart, this is he which receives seed by the wayside. Look at that wicked one, who's that, seed? the wicked seed. Excuse me, sorry. You want a question? Please, you know, you know, ask the question. Which seed? Yeah. Well, you tell me. There's only two. It's, it's the no, you tell me. Well, I was just wondering whether it's a serpent. So, seed of the serpent. It's, it's not. It's the seed, seed of the, of the word of God. It's the oh, word of God. Because it's talking yes. about the word of God being okay. sown. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Okay. Amen. And do you want to join this? Yes, please. If you want a question, you must put your hand up. Okay, if you don't, sorry, I will sir. ask you to leave. Okay, I'm just telling you that now. Sorry, sir. At the beginning. Pastor. Thank you. Sorry, Pastor. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, the seed means the word of God because it speaks. This is the, the parable of the four seeds. You know, the word of God being sown in the heart. The word of God is a seed, just like evil is a seed. If somebody walks into the church and starts gossiping evil, they are sowing seeds of evil in your heart. Do you understand? But if somebody walks in the church and says, God is good, you know, God healed me, you know, God did this, they're sowing seeds of faith. Do you understand? And so, this is what this is saying. So, some people will come to church, they hear the preaching of the word, they hear the Bible, and the minute they walk out, the devil snatches it right out of their heart. How can they snatch it out of their heart? Give me a couple of ideas. By birds. Birds, birds on, on, the, on the, just so birds. Praise the Lord, I love when God, you know what's really good about God? He always confirms his word. Yes. Amen. Just a crow who could be He watching. always does, praise the Lord. The, no, what it means is this: you walk out and you've had a preacher. Let's say you're an uh, let's say you're a drug up, drug taker, yeah. and the preacher was against drugs. You got? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I like what? those. AA false gospel. Listen, yeah, listen. Let him talk. I mean it, sir. Yeah. Don't pass. No, don't know. Don't because you know why? You are what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Unless you be quiet. Amen. Thank you. Next time, I will ask you to leave. If you've joined this seminar, you've come to listen. If not, the door is there. No one forced you to come in here. No one asked you to sit here. Thank you. In Jesus' name, I command you to be quiet or leave. Right. The question I'm saying is the seed. The seed is when you walk out the door, it's the enemy tries to steal that away. and say, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that word. I don't believe that. But how would you... Brother Mike, you'll have to take him in the other room, sir. Sorry. Okay. 
Do you see how the enemy stirs up things to even start the lesson? That's right. Do you not see it? No, no, hold on. Really well. Yeah, no, it's fine. But do you see how we, you know, because this is so important for our spiritual walk. That's right. Because it's like things just get stirred. Mm. Why? It's to stop it, to stop the truth coming out. Mm. And so how it's still the way is you walk out and you don't check the Bible. You don't check that the scriptures that have been preached to check they're true. Mm. So the enemy just steals it right out of your mind. Oh, I never believed that when I was in that church. Oh, this church is different to that church. Oh, that. Instead of going to the Bible and say, let me just check and see if it's right. Amen. 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 And that's how the enemy just... Whoosh, Whips it straight out. And of course, when you say, oh, I never believe that, who are you attacking? Then you attack the pastor. And all the pastor did was preach the word of God. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't not like him. I don't like the way he preaches. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm used to. I don't like the way they sing there, because in our church, we can all be dead in, in a row. But there, they're <laughs> clapping their hands. I don't like that. And yet the Bible said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Clap all of you lambs. But if you went in the Bible and checked it, you would see it was correct. But the enemy just steals straight away, you see, mm -hmm. takes, because you don't bother checking. Amen. Amen. Okay, so here we see the activity of demons are uh, uh, to oppose. The thief comes just like to steal and destroy. These spirits attack men, spiritually morally. Some people are possessed with demons and they don't even know they've got them. And they oppose God's ministers. They prevent the word of God and seek to hinder the gospel. They hold their captives. They blind the minds of unbelievers. They sow terrors amongst the weak. They seduce people. The Greek for seduce is plantus, which by implication means they act as misleading or imposters. Thus they seek to lead astray, a law, tempt, corrupt, and entice. A seducing spirit can cause people to be obsessed with a false idea of doctrinal imbalance. And the reason why that happens is because people do not check the scripture for themselves. They don't check the scripture. They, the whole walk with God, brother, is somebody telling them what to believe. How many Christians do we have like that in the church? So many mm -hmm. who believe only what they're told. Mm -hmm. But in the book of uh, Acts, it says that the Thessalonians were more noble that they heard the preaching of Paul and checked to see if it was correct. Mm -hmm. If you really want to walk with God and have a strong, solid foundation with God, you must study the word, study the word, study the word, and study the word. Always find a reason to study the Word. If there's a Bible school, go. We have a Bible uh, uh, lesson here in Sunday. Don't be late. Get here. It doesn't matter if the teacher's good or not. The fact is, you are studying God's Word. I believe every Bible lesson you attend, you'll get at least 20%. You'll get 20%. So if you attend at least one or two a week, that means you're getting 40%. You're growing. But if you look for a reason to not go, amen, to find an excuse, amen, I can't go because I have a cup. I can't go because my hair's not pretty. I can't go because my shoes have got a hole. I can't go. And the devil's sitting there and go, <laughs> got them out again, amen. amen. Okay, so here we can see uh, what that means is uh, 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 obsession with false doctrine. There's loads of people on the high street that are obsessed with false doctrine. They've, they've confronted me, but every time I've opened the Bible to them, they've ran away. Amen, Pastor. They've ran away. We had one guy up there giving tracts all the time who thinks we're a cult. <laughs> thinks we're a cult. I'm a cult. I'm a cult. Yet he cannot turn around and defend his own preaching in the Bible. Amen. I'm the cult. Amen. I don't think so. No. Because it is written. Mm -hmm. It is written. It is written. Amen. You see? But always remember, the devil will always blame you to be what he is. That's right. Amen. Mm. Yes? Uh, we talk about Satan, yeah? No, we're not. We're talking about demons. Demons. Yeah. Okay. We're not actually talking about yeah. it's, it's, What's your question? Um, um, when you're talking about the high street and, and that. And uh, I noticed in her, you've got the, the woman. We're talking yet. about the Samuel Ramos. No, but we're not the there. The Jezebel spirit. We're not there. We're on uh, number six. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Thank you. Number seven, they trouble people. The Hebrew word for trouble means to make fearful, afraid, or terrified. Let's be honest. Let's see how many people can really be. Who are afraid sometimes? 
who are afraid of all the time. There are some people who are, but they won't admit it. They fear everything. They fear everything and everyone. They're terrified. They're terrified. Like, you know, uh, some people are terrified of losing their jobs. They're so afraid that if their employer told them to bend up backwards and go through a hoop, they would do it. Because they cannot believe that God can give them better. They just can't believe it. I tell you, if you're faithful to God, if you're, you're doing it again, you're doing it again. Just doing it in no, no, nobody else is doing that. Okay, is that You're the only one. Okay. I'm not anyone asking you. Right, I'm going to ask you to leave now, please. Thank you. Go. Thank you. Please, could you show them to the door, Brother Jeffrey? I'm not tolerate you doing that. Thank you very much. Okay. So I needed water today, not for it. Okay. Then you're in the wrong place then. Thank you. Number eight, okay. Now, it says people afraid and terrified. Mm. It speaks of a person being uneasy or molested. Molested means, you know, like they feel totally broke. Do you understand? You know, and they're uneasy. Their life is always like a, a mess, you know. One day they're good, next day they're bad. One day they're up, next day they're down. One day, you know, it's like a yo-yo effect. It's like their life is never, you know, every time you see them, they have nothing good to say. You know, it's like they don't say, praise the Lord, amen. I had such a great week this week. It's always, oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, I'm always, oh, amen. And they're getting lower and lower with the trouble because the devil, the, the, the spirit is pushing them down and pushing them down and pushing. And yet when God tries to reach out to them, they push away. Why? Because the spirit is controlling them, do you see? It's in control of them. Amen. Do you understand? And so they cannot, you know, they cannot turn around and, you know, let go, but this is where we have an altar. This is where you need to be in the church. Why we have the church. The church is there for you to admit that. You can admit to God and say, God, I am oppressed. I am. When you do that, then you're on your way for deliverance. But you can never be delivered if you agree with the devil that's holding you. Never. Never. How can you be delivered if you agree? And you know, let's say for example, I'm, I'm just using you because you're on the front row, yeah? Always remember, don't be on the front row. <laughs> There's a cloth on her head, yeah? There's a cloth on her head, it's not dirty, is it? No. There's a cloth, and I say to her, sit so you have a cloth on your head, and you're like, Pastor, I don't have a cloth on my head. But you know there's a cloth on your head. You know there's a cloth on your head. Do you know what I'm saying? You know already, and but you deny there is. So God can't do anything. But if you turn around and say, yes, there is, but I cannot get it off, then God can reach out and take it off, do you see? Because you can't get it off, but he can get it off. Amen. But you've got to admit that you're oppressed, you know, or even possessed, amen. Praise God. Okay, so we're here, we can see we're at number eight. They oppress people. The Greek word for oppressed is can anyone say that word? Kata anotu, I think. Which means to exercise dominion against, oppress, and overburdened in body or mind. Overburdened in body. Why is it we have people who are in the church who are totally burdened, and yet Jesus said, I have come to give you life and more abundantly? And how come the Bible says that when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, that is the time of rest? And yet some people are so oppressed. You know, they come to church and they look so unhappy all the time. They're miserable all the time. Their lines all over there. They never smile. They're never happy. And, and they work, they, they praise and worship have to work so hard to get them up. And, you know, if you're really free with God, you don't need praise and worship, actually. You don't need it. But the reason why they're so oppressed is because they've never prayed and asked God, are we oppressed, God? Is there anything in our house or in our life which is hindering the joy of the Lord? The Bible said the joy of the Lord is my weakness. The joy of the Lord is prophetic. The joy of the Lord will put me down. The joy of the Lord makes me unhappy. The joy of the Lord makes me sad. The joy of the Lord makes me walk around like that. Is that what the scripture says? It says the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
Amen. And it's the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Praise God. And this is what it's all about. If we don't have that strength, then we cannot attract anybody to the church. And that's why some people are not soul winners. Because when, they, uh, uh, when, when, when somebody comes to them with a problem, they already got so many problems anyway. <laughs> They'll come to you, oh, you know, I've got a problem with my family there. Yeah, so have I. I put you in the apostolic church. Yeah, I know, but it's done nothing for me. Uh, I'm all sad and now I come to church. You know, I'm so sad since I started in that church. And, and, and you know, I just can't do anything. And, and, and it's always going wrong. And everything's going wrong. And, you know. I have so many uh, problems already. But I never share my problems with you hardly, do I? Do you know why I don't do that, Stella? Because my God is my problem solver. Amen. I don't need to go around getting sympathy. Oh, sister. Oh, 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 oh. You know, I don't need to do all of that. And you know why? I don't, you might say, well, you're a pastor, you're full of faith. Yeah, I am a pastor and I'm full of faith. You're right. So should you be. You don't need to be a pastor, but you can be full of faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, the trouble is the enemy gets us to focus on our problems so much mm. that we can't believe they can be solved. Mm. And it's just all the way down. It's a spiral going down, down, down. Because we look at our problem. We don't look at the solution. We don't even admit there is a solution. Mm -hmm. We just keep looking at it all the time, the problem. And so the problem gets bigger and bigger. And suddenly there's an old English saying, most of you will know this, uh, they turn a, uh, a molehill into a mountain. The problem was only small, but by the end of the week, it's so big, you need, uh, you need climbing shoes to get up it. Why? Because it went around everybody they know. Oh, you know, sister, I get a problem with my exam, I don't know how to do it. Oh, sister, I get a problem with my exam, I don't know how to do it. Oh, pro oh brother, my exam. So, oh. And by the time to get to the last person, they're, oh, you know, I'm exam. they're just like totally down. Totally down. Instead of turning around and saying, I have a problem, but the Lord is the solution. God is going to help me. God is going to be with me. God is going to bless me. God is going to bring back to my memory. God is going to do God, God, God. Can you stop talking about God? That's what they'll say. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they do. Isn't it great when somebody tells you to stop talking about God? <laughs> that shows you really love him and you trust him. <laughs> so, we can see here the burden of the body. What about number nine? They vex people. The Greek word for pasco involves a personal experience, sensation, usually painful feelings and suffering. The word also means to mob, harass, molest, or to suffer at the hands of another, to suffer. Like some people just get sick for no reason. You know, they wake up one day, I'm sick, I'm totally sick. For no reason. You know, I've laid hands upon myself a million times and rebuked it. You have the power. Listen, let me just take you to the scripture. Mark, show some of you here well, how much power you've got. Mark 16. Mark 16, verse 15. No, verse 16. We'll go Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be down. Verse 17. These signs shall follow them that what? Believe. In my name they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Look at the lap. They shall lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. You have the authority to do this, Mandy. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the sickness out of my body. Amen. 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 You have that authority. You don't need a pastor or anyone. The Bible said, those signs will follow those that believe. Isn't it funny, if, I, I'm not telling you you shouldn't have prayer requests in it, but isn't it funny the same people pray for the same things in the same prayer request? <laughs> Very rare do I have prayer requests for my own personal use. Do you know why? Because I've already prayed to God. I don't need a prayer meeting. But we have prayer meeting, you know, for prayers for the church. But if you are a praying person, you don't need prayer requests. You've already prayed. <laughs> Amen. But usually the people who need all the prayer requests are not living for God. That's why they've got to get the same prayer request over and over. Pray for my back. Pray for my back. Next week, pray for my hand. Pray for my hand. <laughs> pray for my hand. You know, it's always another one, another one, another one. Why? Because they're not praying themselves. Amen. 
The Bible said these signs will follow them that believe. Listen, if you're in your room praying like this, you can just lay hands upon any part of your body and in Jesus' name, rebuke it. You have the authority to do that. Amen. Amen. You have the authority to do that, praise God. You see, there is a time when we are a baby in the Lord, but there's a time we need to translate from babyism to childism, then from childism to teenagism, then teenagism to maturityism. Some people just stay baby forever. Do you know what I'm saying? It's that always help me, Pastor. Always pray for me, pray for me, always, oh, 10 years later, oh, pray, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. It's the same prayer 10 years ago. <laughs> pray, pray, my mind, pray, I don't, I can't decide, pray. No maturity. God called us to grow. We need to grow up. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Amen. 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 Does people want to grow here? Yes. yes. Or do you all want to stay babies? No. no. Do you want spiritual diapers forever? No. You know when you've grown up in the Lord is when you can survive in a town or in a house or anywhere on your own and still be a Christian. That's right. You don't give it up. When you're on your own, do you know what I'm saying? You're on your own in a house or somewhere and you still pray, you still read your Bible, you still listen to Christian songs. Somebody sees you, you'll tell them about Christ, you'll live for Christ in that house, you'll live for Christ in that town, even if there's no church. Some people turn around and say, I, I, I never went to church, Pastor, because there was no church. I just backslid because there's no church. That means you were never truly converted anyway. Mm -hmm. If you really converted, listen, I went to a town in the Philippines where there was no church, no Bible study, nothing. When I first arrived, this was many years ago, 25 years ago, yeah? I arrived there, there was nothing. There was no, this one, this doctrine, nothing. When I left, there was a church there. Amen. And now there's over 350 members. That's in the Groupon City. Now, I could have sat there, couldn't I, and just turn around and say, I'll wait till somebody, no. If there ain't a church and God sent me there, then I will, start I'll start one. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. God sent me there to start one. He didn't send me there to twiddle my fingers, <laughs> wait around for the enemy to take away everything and allow me to be destroyed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is why these spirits, you see, they take away your uh, 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 freedom. They, they rob you of your faith. They say you can't do it. You're no good. You're, you're rubbish. You're, and they depress you and, and get you upset and angry and you get angry at people and in bed at night you know they're laying on top of you sometimes pressing you down do you know what I'm saying and, and, and you, come on it's just demons you can get mad you know what's funny I keep running into this you know what's so funny you know what's so funny you get mad at people yeah. We do. We get mad at them. Why don't we get mad at the, the devils? Devil. Why can't we turn around to them? In Jesus name, get out of my life. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Huh? Why can't we do that? Because some of us are afraid. We're afraid that if we do that, they might get worse. Mm -hmm. They won't. If you do that, they won't be there anymore. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Don't be afraid of somebody who has no power over you. Because mm -hmm. if you are, you're being conned. Praise the Lord. Number 10, they, blind, they bind people. The Greek word "divo" means to tie up, confine, fasten, especially binding cords. The woman in Luke 13 was bound with a spirit of infirmity and had to be loosened in her physical body. Note, some physical infirmities are caused by demons. The reason why we're sick is because we are bound. There are people who are spiritually bound like this. They're in the church. That's why, have you noticed some people, they cannot lift their hands up and worship? They can't, doesn't matter how much Holy Ghost comes down. Some people are bound. How can you live? Look, you can't. Amen. You know, lifting your hands up, by the way, every time you lift your hands and worship, what you are saying is, I am submitting myself to God. I am submitting myself. I don't care if people look at me. Because if you care, if you won't put your hands up because you're afraid of other people looking, <laughs> then don't go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Serious. Because when you're in heaven, there will be a billion angels watching you. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Angel, stop. Close your eyes, angel. <laughs> so I can put my hand up. Do you know what I'm saying? Get used to it here on earth. Amen. Because it's much easier for you to translate into the next life. This is why we're alive. God is training us. Training us to worship Him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, number 11. They deceive people. That's easy. They possess people. 
Possession entails both uh, occupancy, ownership of a person by an evil spirit. It is indwelling control. Possession is under the power and control of a demon that has entered the person and can control their faculties at will. No truly born again believer can be possessed by demons because the Holy Spirit dwells within a believer. This is why I believe, and I thank God for this discernment, there are people in the church who have mimic the Holy Ghost. Amen. They don't have the Holy Ghost really. They mimicked it, do you understand? They sat there, you know, like, just watch it. See, I could just speak in tongues. I'm not in the spirit at the, well, I'm in the spirit, but I'm not in the spirit, you know, today. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's easy to do. But the only way that you could tell if I'm really a spirit-filled person would be by my fruits following me. Do you see? You know, building churches, witnessing to people, preaching, people being healed under my ministry. These are the fruits. So when people get filled with the Holy Ghost, yeah, they're filled with the Holy Ghost and still always angry and bitter and horrible, they've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, actually. They've mimicked it. And that mimicking is to deceive you. It's part of the plan to get you onto their deception. Because you trust them, you see, they're a good friend. That's why you, you know, you've got to be careful, man, with everybody. Mm. Now, tonight, please, don't all of you be walking around and saying, you have a demon? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that, yeah? I don't want us to get paranoid with each other. You know what I'm saying? You understand? I'm not rude, I'm rude about you, Rachel. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is this, when people start asking things, but asking you to do things which is against God's word, that's when you need to start questioning where they are from. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And you know, and, and not only that, if they start to preach to you and tell you to do this, like we had a discussion with somebody, they'll know in this room uh, who they are, but uh, don't smile when I say it, so that way they won't know who you are. But like some people always say, well, the Lord told me, the Lord told me to do this, the Lord told me to do that, the Lord told me to do that, God told me to do this, God told me to do that, God told me to do that. <laughs> That's not, I don't believe that. I don't believe people live a life like that. They get up in the morning, God told me to brush my teeth. God told me to do my legs. God told me to move this chair over to that. God told me to do that. Yeah, that's, that's the devil. That's the devil. You know what the devil is doing? Pretending to be the voice of the Lord and getting them into bondage of doing crazy things. Now, at the beginning, it won't be crazy. It will be simple things. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Lord told me to eat pork pie today. The Lord told me to not eat pork pie. The Lord told me, but in the future, the Lord told me to hurt the pastor. The Lord told me, no, but they will do it. Why? Because the devil has built them up, do you understand? Mm. To believe. Yeah. Mm. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Mm. It doesn't happen straight away, but he's built them up and built them up and built them up to their now brainwashed mm. that they believe that their whole life, they have no choice anymore. It's always the Lord. Yeah. The Lord. Mm. And by the way, when you say the Lord, well, there are many lords. Lord, Paul yeah. says there's many lords. Mm. Which Lord is it? That's it. Mm. That's right. You need to know which Lord is speaking to you. Mm. Do you really believe Jesus? Listen, I love my daughter, yeah? She's my daughter, but I'm not gonna get up in the morning and say, have this for breakfast, put that sock on there, do that there, do that there, do that there, do that there. Do I give her some freedom to choose. Do you not believe if a father will give a daughter <coughs> some freedom to choose that our heavenly father would give us some freedom to choose? Mm. I believe so. Yes. I will avoid anybody like that. When they come to me, the Lord told me, Pastor, to give you this. Okay, that's fine. The Lord told me, Pastor, to come in your shoes. Oh, I, the Lord told me, Pastor, to make you a coffee. The Lord told me, Pastor, to go make your bed. The Lord, like, I'll be dying. Oh my gosh, you know, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> and the reason why people are like that is because they are trying to substitute the Bible with the Lord told them. Mm. Do you understand? Because if you read the Bible, you never need to say, The Lord told me. Mm. Never. Mm. Because God speaks through his word. Amen. Amen. But they have to say that because they are showing to you that they are godly. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that is a deceiving spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Now I'm not saying if somebody says the Lord, not, not everybody, no, everybody, you know, but if it continues, goes on and on and on and on, then that's a deceiving spirit that's trying to deceive you 
into thinking that they are holy, religious, biblically educated, and then sooner or later, they're going to drop a bombshell to try and get you out. Everything is designed to try and get you away from God. That's why you need to be wise and balanced. Amen? Any questions at the moment? Is anybody learning anything today? Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 The Lord told me. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> number 13, they torment people. I think we can all that. Number 14, they buffet people. To buffet means to hit with blow after blow, to punch, to slap, and fight against. Sometimes you are buffeted. You are attacked physically. You know, some demons will attack you physically. Praise the Lord. Okay? Number 15, they resist people. That means they oppose, stand up against, and act as an adversary against somebody. One of Christians' controversy, one great controversy with our faith is, can a Christian be possessed? The answer is clearly no, for the above mentioned reasons. Uh, 12, however, there is little doubt that a Christian can be oppressed, I already said that today, and in some cases to great extent. The degree of oppression depends on the person's past experience. For example, prior to being saved, a person may have been part of a secret society, which implies they were initiated, and in so doing, some so demons would be attracted to them. Others may have been bewitched, or through their exposure to the spirit world by various means. They may have been given legal right to demons to operate in their lives. In many cases, spirits of inheritance have been passed down a particular family line by performing denomic rituals. Whatever the means of denomic contact, there is an important principle that Christians must understand, and that is the power of covenants from the above examples. Denomic covenants typically are in place that need to be broken by the power of the new covenant, which is Jesus Christ. Many born-again believers who past have, have strong denomic links will need to be delivered from denomic covenants. Therefore, Christians can be in need of deliverance, but not from possession, but from oppression. So anyone tell me what some of these come? Like, for example, you may have a wife or a husband that put a spell on you. Do you understand? Mm. You may have a witch doctor back in your country that's put a spell on your family. When you were born, it was instantly put on you. Yes? You may have a boyfriend. Now, I remember some of you, uh, uh, there's a family in Brighton, and they came to me, they were honest, and they said, Pastor, we've been filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, and, and, and we've been baptized, but we have a problem praying in our house. Every time we pray in the house, we are so down and down and down. And I said, what you need to do next time is pray in the name of Jesus to reveal you if there's any curse or anything offensive. And suddenly, out came it all. Do you know what came out? There was a belt that was given to one of the girls that had a curse on it from the witch doctor. There was an idols and statues and pictures, you know, everything. The, all of this stuff, the minute they got it all out, they said, when they threw it all out, the Holy Ghost fell in their house and they were all speaking in tongues. Yeah. You see, they can stop the flow of God. That's why you need to be honest in your home. If you've got statues or idols or you've got a little altar, for example, if you've got, let's say you had a nice boyfriend, yeah, a really lovely boyfriend and he was nice to you and kind and considerate, he, I mean, yeah, and then suddenly dumps you, yeah, and you've got a little altar with his picture there, you know, and, and, and every day before you go out, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And you pray to that. Do you understand? And so that, that will hinder God's spirit moving in your life. Because it's become an idol, do you see? It's become an idol. And so you've got, and that, whenever you idolatrize anything, you attract denomic spirits to you. Like the spirit of the dead. If you've had somebody passed away, and you're praying for the person that's passed away, you will attract demons to you. You will attract them. Mm -hmm. When you're dead, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. No that's it. There's no more prayer. No. But that's a Roman Catholic doctrine. Mm -hmm. All saints dead. All saints dead. All, All saints, saints dead. dead. <laughs> All souls dead. It's to pray for the dead. And some of us, even though we come into apostolic, we still hold on to that. You know what I'm saying? No. Tradition. It's a tradition. But the tradition can destroy you. That's the problem. Even Paul says that the traditions of men... Beware of them, because they will destroy you. 
So people actually pray for the dead. Yes. Dead really Some people. Them. Yeah. Listen, if you now you may say that, but there are people. Let's say they've had a wife or a husband they were very close to, or a baby that died that they were very close. Sometimes they won't let it, the person go. So they take on the spiritual form, do you understand? And, they, and, and sometimes you could be praying for them indirectly. By, you could be sitting in your chair and say, oh, let's just say, uh, 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 I, I want to get a name that's not, Jenny. No one's called Jenny here yet. <laughs> oh, Jenny, I still miss you so much. Jenny, I love you so much. I remember the times we had together. Oh, I wish you were still. Oh, Jenny, I can feel your presence here. I can feel. You see, that's going in the realm of being on it. You cannot feel the presence of a dead person. Wow. When you feel something, it is not that dead person. It is a the demon dead. masquerading as that dead person. Mm. Yeah. Always remember, there's no such thing as ghosts. Mm. But there are such things as demons who masquerade as your loved ones. So if somebody's died that you love, and suddenly they appear in your living room, I would rebuke That's that in Jesus' name. I say, in the name of Jesus, get out! I don't care if it's my mom or dad. Get out now! In Jesus' name. Because it cannot be your mom and dad. It's impossible. Yes. Yeah, now here's an example. Oh yes, that's a good one, Joshua. When I was going to baptize the grandma of Rachel, you know, uh, her mother, who'd been dead, came to her in a dream and said, don't let that man baptize you. What kind of dream is that? That is a, no, that was a demon from hell. That was a demon. Do you know why? Because that woman, her baptism changed the whole course of that town. It really did. And the demon didn't want that. No, no, no. If that person gets baptized, because she was a matriarch woman, she was a woman of great influence over Everyone all the town. Everybody knew her. And that devil knew that. And that's why they were so afraid that if that person got baptized and lived for God, who knows what damage they would do to Satan's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so, can you believe that the demon came up in the form of her mother, who'd been dead for how many years, and turned around and said, don't let that man baptize you. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful, yeah. yeah. But thank goodness she got baptized. Yeah. She never listened to it, that dream and went on. And all her family was saved, everybody. So this is what I'm saying, you need to be very careful. You know, some of us, we do it, Ignorantly, we don't realize we're doing it. Yes. But I believe this: if you've got, if you've got a loved one that's passed away, yeah, remember them. Don't worship them. And if you are still worshiping them, you need to get rid of all their stuff because that will. You know what I'm saying? If, if my, I mean, my wife's not here. If my wife passed away, God forbid, but if she did, yeah, okay. Of course, I grieve for her. But after a couple of months, I would clear all her stuff out. I would sell it or give it to a child, the whole lot, all the pictures, I'd keep a couple of pictures, and then if I got remarried again, then I would just maybe have one picture to remember her by, because my life has changed now, you understand? She's with God. Amen. So I don't need to sit there with a picture every day, I miss you, Joy, I miss you, Joy, I miss you. Because you know why, when you do that, Joy yourself is no power, but you attract devils, devils into your house, and then the devils will make you feel nice, and you'll think, is that you, Joy? It mm -hmm. does work. Definitely. It does work. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You're talking to the picture, oh, Joy, I miss you, and then you get like, oh, Joy, you're here. You're here. Oh, Joy. You know what I'm saying? And then the devil's already tricked you, trapped you already. Because once he can establish that he's Joy, or you know what I'm saying, and convince you, then you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Mm. Remember, when somebody's dead, they're dead. Dead. Yeah, I know it's. I know you probably think I'm heartless and cruel. You know the way I'm talking. I'm not. We. That's why I always tell the people you love every day you love them, because you don't know when they'll be gone. Yeah. And then once they're gone, you know, have your grieving time. There's a time for grief. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But there's a time to stop grieving and get on with your life yes. and stop worshiping them. You know they're gone now already. That's the past. Amen. If not, you will attract those demons to you. And I tell you, they will oppress you big time. So here we can see, we need to, you need to, in the altar tonight when we have our service, there's nothing wrong to pray and say, God, if there's any curse or covenants on me, if there's any demon that has been, I need to be, have it broken in the name of Jesus. 
and go one step further and say, God, if in my house there are things that offend you right now, reveal it to me. And when you reveal it to me, please don't let me harden my heart. Let me be soft and let me get it and throw it all away. I remember uh, Brother Raul, Raul, you know Raul? He wanted the Holy Ghost and we were in the service and it was the Lord that just spoke for me and it's, I don't know why I said, I said, go home and search your house. He went home and searched his house, and in his joy had loads of rosaries and crosses and stuff. He got them and threw them out, got filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You see, God is not a whore. He will not share his love with the devil. Do you understand? It's either God or the devil. He makes you choose. I don't want to share my love. If you want to come to bed with me, it's me only. I'm not saying that, by the way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what God is saying. It's me only. You're not sharing my love with anybody else. Yeah. You're not. Yeah. And that's why God will reveal. If there's something sitting in your house, a picture of Mary or something, it will, God is not happy. No. Because he wants you to move away from these traditions, this idolatry, do you know what I'm saying? Into spiritual worship. Those that worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth, not statues. Spirit. Amen. Alright, any questions at the moment? Yes, uh, Which article are we in? Yeah, the, the, the first one. The yeah. one of Christian uh, controversy it says, uh, may a person may be uh, previously a part of a secret society that implies they yes. were initiated. In the Philippines, I, I am sure some of them, some of you will know, we have in college, they will ask you if you want to join fraternities mm -hmm. which our own college professors yep. are even joining. They need to be broken in the name of Jesus. Yes. If you have joined any fraternity where you are to swear allegiance to anything, yes. and that the, needs to be repented of in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And there's initiation, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the initiation, there's nothing you can do about that. He think you... Yeah, no, what I'm saying is, if you... The initiation, whatever they've done, that they've done it. You can't go in the past. But if you've joined one of those societies, you have to pray that and have it broken. Because that demon that's made that society, that still, you, they still have a right on you to come and get you. Because you haven't broken that curse yet. Just like, for example, if, if somebody put a spell on you, like someone put a spell and said, right, this man will always, uh, at Christmas time, at the December the 25th, will have a cold. And some people, they do, they have a, you know, I'm, I'm just using that example. But you need to break that curse. There's some people who have like, they're always at the anniversary of somebody, they will have a problem. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a curse, you see. And every curse can be broken in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ breaks every curse. Every curse. And if you've got a curse on you that you don't know, mm. then you need to pray that God will break any curse that you don't know about. Amen. And pray sincerely. Don't joke about it. You pray sincerely. There are people in the church. This is why some Pentecostal churches cannot grow because their members are cursed. Mm -hmm. And they're in the church. They're doing all the normal stuff. They're not growing. The reason why they're not growing is because the devil still has legal rights on them. Because they never ever asked to be broken. Just because you're baptized in Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. you're filled with the Holy Ghost, but if you don't break the legal right, just like, for example, right, what if I'm legally married in America, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I don't like my wife, so I fly over to the UK and get married again again. Ah, she still has a legal right on me. Mm -hmm. 15 yes. years later, By she can show up 15 years later and say, I am your legitimate wife. Do you understand? Here is the document. And what can you do about it? Tell me. You have to entertain it. And you can have a new kids, a new family, and everything. So I ran away from the problem, but the problem caught me up, right? It's the same thing spiritually. We run away from our problems, right? We get born again, think we've got a new change of life. But that same thing is catching us up again. We need to break it in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. And have it broken. And it could be addiction. It could be uh, uh, depression. It could be all kinds. There's a million things that could go on and all night. It could be. Like, for example, your parents, your parents could have molested you. 
you know? And that, that, that on that, that is just always there, do you know what I'm saying? And it always depresses you when you think about it, and it always brings you down, and it's a curse that can be put on you. Because if the parent, before they were born again, were cursed, remember, if you are one flesh with somebody, that curse is transferred over to you. So, for example, you could have had a husband or a wife, which was a demon worshipper, and you slept with them, right? Mm -hmm. And that's transferred over you. Then over the years, you broke up and you remarried or whatever, or the husband died or whatever, and now you've been born again. But that curse is still sitting mm -hmm. on you. And it gives the license for the demons to come. You don't want to give any license. That's why one time I was praying in my house. I prayed every wall. I anointed every wall. Then I anointed myself over and over everywhere. That's why I don't feel oppressed anymore. I, I have never felt as free as I do today, honestly, in all my life. I am so free and light. Why? Because any oppression that my family transferred on me yet is broken. It's all broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. So doorways to denominate actually. There are many doorways or opening for demons to enter into a person's life. In all cases, sin must be present. Uh, uh, present have taken place in some form, otherwise, the demons will have no legal rights to operate and thus can be easily dealt with. The concept of legal rights must be clearly understood when dealing with deliverance, otherwise, the person cannot be set free from demon activity unless an inherent rights are broken. One of the main doorways for demon activity that give legal rights to demons is the occult. As a result of the fall, man has throughout the ages has longed to contact invisible spirit realm. Satan exploits man and has provided numerous avenues in the world of spiritualism and the occult. All occultist practices are Satan's counterfeit form of communication. The following is a list of occult practices. There are two main categories, i.e. those that are mentioned in the Bible and those there are modern forms. No, anyone involved with these can be contaminated by demonic spirits and will need some form of deliverance. So here's a couple Bible-based doorways. Magicians. Any kind of magician, even little magician clowns for children. Don't sit there and say, well, it's just a kid's magician. Any kind of magic or magician or illusion or whatever is denomic. Why did, what's his name? We were talking about this the other day, Houdini. How come Houdini could get out of incredible things? Even, it, some of them were impossible. Because he had demons working with him. They were working with him. Because they were all in, and he never started like, at the beginning he started the little spells first, you know, card tricks, you know, like that. And then more, and added and added until he became a magician. Okay? Magicians. The scriptures are there. If you don't believe me, you go to the scriptures later. You can take this home, of course, it's yours. All magicians are involved with spiritualism. Wise men claim to have supernatural wisdom from unseen world. Divination. To divine, to determinate, lock or magical scroll, fortune telling. How many of us have had a fortune told here, honestly? Um, okay, you need to pray and break that in Jesus' name. Because when you had your fortune told, they could have laid a curse upon you. It's possible. Could even be as basic as a fortune cookie. Yes, yes. And not yet, how many of you honestly read your horoscopes? Now. No, no. How many did before? When I was a couple. Right? You see, again, that can be cursing you. Because that's in the denomic spiritual realm. You know, that's what it is. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we can see that. Fortune, observer of times. To cloud over, to augue for the appearance of clouds. Passing through the fire, children consecrated by Moloch for the death. That's where they used to throw babies into the fire. And some people do it today, you know, fire walking. Mm. Passing through the fire. Mm. You see? How come some people can walk through fire and not get burned? Mm. You see, we think all these are games. Oh, Pastor, it's just the thing when we're drunk, we're having a bit of fun. No, it's all in the spirit realm. Mm. If the devil can convince you it's just a bit of fun, he's laughing, isn't he? Because you're not taking it seriously, you see? It's not serious. And he doesn't want you to take it serious. He wants you to think it's a game. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, enchanter, 
A whisperer mutters of enchantment and magic spells. A witch, we all know that, to whisper or spell or pra Like today, there is a resurgent of witchcraft today and the occult. Can anyone tell me where? Give me some ideas. Harry Potter, Twilight. This, you think this is, people think that, oh, that's just a movie, Pastor. No, it's not. Do you know, most people don't know this, because the newspaper, when Twilight, the first movie, the first movie was released in America, two people had epileptic fits in the cinema. Two. Now, one, the chances of one having is quite rare, but two in the same movie on the same night, the demons. But, of course, you, listen, most people would never re recognize that as demons. Do you know why? Because they're all controlled by the devil anyway. If you are controlled by the devil, before you are born again, you belong to the kingdom of Satan. You would not even recognize it. You'd say, it's an epileptic pick only. The hospital came and did the stuff and off they went. No, what it was is, look at, if you look at the picture of Twilight, the guy, he's a demon, man. Mm. I don't care what you say. You can see the devil in his eyes. And if you're watching that, and you're flirting with that in your house, you are, what you're doing, you may say, well, it's not wrong. No, it's not wrong. But what you're doing is you are putting a big neon light on your house saying, come to me, devils. That's what you're saying, come to me. Entertaining. You're entertaining it, you see. Thus, you are asking for them to come to you. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. All of this occultive movies and stuff. I know most people in here, maybe in here, you've got copies of it stuck in your house somewhere. You know, probably hiding somewhere under, yeah. You may say, it's not, you look, to me, I will never see in my house. Any of my kids get any of that in their house? In my house, bringing them without my permission, I will be furious. You know why I'm furious? Can anyone tell me? I'll get you a question. Why would I be furious? Because the little baby. No, that's from yeah. the devil. It's from the devil. But why would I be furious if those two, more than any, why? <clears throat> There's two reasons. Number one, for their sake. And number two, they're bringing in a curse which could hurt me too. Why should I let them destroy me? Because I know by that coming in my house, there is an opportunity for a, an attack on me as well. Do you understand? Yes. You know, uh, the school that Joshua is going to, he couldn't get into the school, but the school, it's a, a state school, but was a Roman Catholic, you know, there. They gave him a little medallion with a, a statue of Jesus, or whatever. I don't know what it was, but anyway. Do you know what? He never had that in the house, not one day, and I felt it, didn't I? I felt there was something going, there was something wrong. Do you remember? And, and we searched, all, and he said, what, is this it, Dad? And I said, yeah, that's it, get it out. The minute he got it out, peace came into the house again. And that was this big. Only that big. That's how sensitive we are. Because we know already, when you let it in, it will start to take over you. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah, and, um, I heard it said one time, there's no such thing as white or black magic. It's no. Black yeah. magic. And there's no such thing as white or black lies. Little white lies, you know, no such thing. And there's no thing as, a, like, when you hear, well, there's a white witch, they're a good witch. There is no good witch. Every witch is evil and horrible and wicked. There is no good devil, there is no good wizard, there is no good. Yes. But that's what they, out there, they're making it like that because they know already it's evil, but they have to cover that up. So you hear this white witch. <laughs> this is a white witch. White, white witch. And so they, some people try, you know those the Chinese uh, stuff like frogs? Yes, yeah. uh, yes. The one who is yes. making like that. Very good. These are things of good luck charms. Yes. For example, good luck charms, you know, like rabbit's foot, uh, St. Christopher's, uh, stuff like that. Look at Halloween is coming. Halloween right now. All these people are clouding their house with all Halloween, Halloween stuff. stuff. It's all magic. It's all designed. This is why there's an occultic arise. Now, you may say, well, I've got to go. If I don't do with them, they will not be my friends. Or, if, you know, everyone's doing it. Listen, if you, if you are not doing it, God will protect your home. Amen. You will never see, you will never see a pumpkin outside my house. Amen. Right. You will never see a, uh, some goblin like you, you know, on my window. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yes. That's better. Uh, no. And, uh, you know, just, I'm not, you know, because you know why? 
I know already that it starts little. The minute you start little, it grows and it grows until next thing you know, you're backslidden. You're backslidden. You're already gone out of church. You're backslidden. Can I just clarify? There's nothing wrong with pumpkins. It's just what they do to Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the pumpkin itself, you can make a nice pie. We're not saying that. What they do to We're not saying that. Just like mince pies. There's nothing. Or hot cross buns. You know, hot cross buns are dynamic. Actually, they are. Because they were made to celebrate All, uh, all Souls Day or something. Yes, that's what they were. Like and in the Chinese moon cake, you know moon cake for the fest. I see you for the moon festival. There's nothing wrong with moon cake. <laughs> <laughs> but you can stay in. But the meaning. Yeah. The Bible yeah. says if you pray for everything, it's good. Yeah. You know, but if you eat this and say I'm eating this because I love the moon and the moon, you know, then you're you're yes. on dangerous territory. Yes. Uh, yeah. I go to church in uh, quite a few different churches, and they go on the hills on the. Uh, Yes, I know. It's because they're blind. You've got angels on ends and you've got all demons. The Bible says make no images. Make no images, sister. And if you, again, if you read the Bible, you will recognize. Can I be honest with you? If you read the whole Bible with a sincere heart, you wouldn't be going to many churches anymore. That's an honest question to you, honestly. You really wouldn't. Because once you know the Bible, you really understand that you will never find a statue in this church ever. No. You'll never find a picture, and if there is a picture, I don't know about it. When I find that, it'll be out. Do you know what I'm saying? Because the Bible said, God is the spirit, and they that worship him, worship him, spirit and in truth. Sister. I've got the Chinese and James for the like, is that bad? Well, it depends on what it says on the lantern. If it's got Chinese script on there, and it's towards some God or something, yes, it can be bad. I don't write, read Chinese, so I don't know. But what if the Chinese writing is saying, uh, Hail Buddha, but you don't know it? So if you're not sure, the best thing to do, if you're not sure, don't do, don't do. If you, like, you just ask that question, maybe there's, in your heart, you're not sure. If you're not sure, it's better to get rid of it. It's better to get rid of it. Amen. Like, in, um, when I was in Bible school, they were talking about certain kinds of incense are yes. religiously yes. based, yes. but are sold as as um, they're sold as um, <laughs> as fragrances. Yeah. So I think you really need to like research. The we bring curse into your house. Now we're supposed to finish at six because we have it out. But I'm one, are you okay to go an extra fifteen minutes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's then we'll go outreach. Yeah, and then there'll be an outreach team to go. Okay. So what I'm saying is this: if you feel a conviction. Never receive it to please somebody, you know, like for example, I remember one time that me and Joy Ride, we were given a big calendar, it was a nice calendar, and the calendar was on the wall, and it had a big dragon, yeah. Chinese yeah. dragon, you know these, yeah. and it didn't stay there for two days. The second day, I just was so irritated by that, <laughs> and so was Joy, and I said to Joy, I said, Joy, I don't really like that calendar, and she goes, no, what? I don't like it too, this is scary. <laughs> and so it was a confirmation that it was gone, you know. And, and sometimes God doesn't get mad at you if you're a little bit, you know, like naive. Uh, uh, naive. Yeah. But when he gives you the conviction <laughs> and you don't get rid of it, then he'll get mad. Yeah. You know, then he, remember at the beginning, what did the scripture say? If you rebel against me, I will say evil angels amongst you. Didn't he? Remember at the beginning in Psalms, the first scripture that you read, and we'll read that again before we dismiss. So the point what that's saying is if you bring evil material into your house, God will send evil spirits amongst you. Simple as that. And anything that is contrary against God can be classed as evil. Do you know what I'm saying? Or at least starting, you know. Mm. And that's why today we, you know, in the, uh, you all know about the great revival in Wales, you know, and the great revival, we talk about the great, but well, at the moment there's a great revival of the occult. Mm -hmm. If you look in Hollywood, nearly every other movie has something to do with vampires, Draculas, yes. uh, so aliens, what about aliens? These are devils. Yeah. You really believe there's aliens on other planets? When I mean, the Bible doesn't even speak about it. Do you really believe there's all these things walking around like this? Come on, look at aliens. Nine times out of ten, they all look like devils. They go, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, come on. Yes, you may turn around and say, oh, I don't believe you. You know, aliens is 
a trick of Satan to convince us there's life out there. So that way we will think that God, either we'll think there is no God at all, or we will think the aliens were God, who came down here, amen, and because of their great technology, they gave us this, and we were, and so we will be convinced. Now, I'm going to tell you this story now. Some of you, I'll, I'll get your I, question. I just no. I've got a friend, a very good friend, and every time he spends time with me, he says, oh, he feels close to God. But he actually believes in that alien thing yeah. that you just said before the technology. Me and Joshua know this. We watched this great documentary. It's, I, I, I'll try to remember it. And it was about people who had alien encounters and then were taken up into ships. They call it, what do they call that? Abduction, yeah. Now, what was funny about the abduction is this. Everyone that was abducted, right, that didn't say anything, was abducted and probed and went through the whole thing. But the ones that rebuked the abduction in Jesus' name suddenly woke up. Now, you tell me what that means. It's a dream. It's, yes, it's a deception. They, there were some that went into the spaceship and they said, in the name of Jesus, and suddenly they woke up in their bed. Amen. It's a deception by the devil. <laughs> it's a total deception. And they believe that the future, you know the, the Bible says that when Jesus comes, every eye shall see him. Some people think he's in the sky, but actually it's the second resurrection when he comes. But it's through TV. And some people believe that Jesus will come back as an alien. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 the, yeah. the world will believe it. Yeah. They will believe it. Mm. They will believe it. They will be deceived and believe it. The Bible said the whole world will see. Do you see? The whole world. And this is the question. We are now in the realm of total uh, uh, deception upon the planet. Do you understand? In every form, everywhere. We laugh at these aliens, of course. But if you look at, like, for example, Predator. Predator looked like the devil. Alien looked like the devil. Can anyone tell me a nice alien? Come on. Because even the nice ones, when they pull off the mask, are <laughs> like this. The human form, and suddenly, you know, let's be honest. Why? Why do they all look horrible? Because the spirit has to show who they really are. You know? And they come in human form, don't they? Like you've seen, um, there was um, Independence Day, do you remember? There's uh, all of these, I mean, all of them, I don't know them all, but some of the nice, cuddly, lovely little aliens, and then suddenly one little girl is peeping through the, and the guy's pulling off his body, you know, it's all horrible and terrible, and, you know, it's just a deception. So, just beware, man, beware. Don't get into this sign. I, I'm getting on my son all the time because he keeps blaming me that I introduce him to science fiction, you know. Amen. Instead of him turning around and saying, Daddy, I can't break this. <laughs> Charmer. Charmer. Number nine. Consulter of familiar spirits. That's a consulter of demons. One who has direct fellowship and communication with demons. Impersonating spirits who are familiar with a deceased person's life and deceit. Remember I talked about you cannot see a dead person. If you see a dead person that you know, it is a demon masquerading as that person. And like a seance, you know a seance where they all sit around and they go, anybody out there? Anybody out there? Or Luigi board, you know this Luigi? Anybody out there? And suddenly you hear, nah, what's up, doc? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and people think that's Bugs Bunny. It's not, it's a devil pretending to be Bugs Bunny. You know? And this is the thing, and, and I can't be honest with you, there should nobody be in this room ever be in a seance. And if you've been in a seance before, that needs prayer. You need to break that because you could have been cursed in that. If you've ever done a Luigi board, you understand what the Luigi board is? That's where they have a little That's thing in there and they pray yes. and then it moves ah, over like that. Uh, it's magic, lesson. magic, you know, you need to get, you need to pray against that as well. Okay, number 10 is a wizard. One who is able to supply information by means of spiritual contact. A necromancer which is seeker unto the dead, consults the dead for advice and information, astrologer, stargazer, monthly programmer, these monthly things are the ones who do your horoscopes. Why, think about it, common sense, why is it called a horoscope? Horror. Think about it, does horror portray a nice thing? Horror. Horror? What a horrible person. Do you ever say, well, they must be nice then? Horoscope. Why? Because the one who's giving the information is horrible. Horoscope. 
okay? Uh, horoscopists, studying the stars to predict events on the earth. Soothsayers, fortune tellers, uh, future events by appearance of the clouds. Sorcerers, practice of hidden arts of magic and chance with, with drugs. This is the drugs you see. Sometimes people take drugs and they go into the spirit realm. Like if you take uh, magic mushrooms, some people, magic mushrooms is a very, uh, it's a natural form of LSD. And if you take magic mushrooms, right, you go into, you can, they, they all, nearly everyone who's done mushrooms have incredible stories to tell. <laughs> incredible story. Incredible. And listen, I know, I took mushrooms one time in America. I did. Is it a drug? Oh, gosh, I regret it ever since. I tell you, first of all, what happened to me, I'll just quickly tell you, what happened to me is, you know this part of my, uh, this part of my leg here, this leg, my, my feet were connected to my knees. That's the first thing I saw. I was walking through a park and my legs were gone, but my leg was there. And I was going through this part and it went on forever. I was training forever and ever and ever, and then suddenly I saw missiles in the air. You know, you know, ICBMs flying all over the place, you know, it was, it was man. I saw five colors all at the same time, all in front of me, do you know what I'm saying, big giant, and when I went to bed, I couldn't see because the place was full of spiders, and I, I had to quickly put my foot on the ground, the minute I took my foot off the ground, I started really severely dizziness, but the minute I put my foot back on, it was a, because it affects everybody different, but the fact is, is people take this so they can communicate with spirits. And always remember, whenever you're doing that, you are vulnerable to spiritual attack and spiritual possession, do you see? And this is why you need to stay away from that sort of stuff. Okay, modern doorways or uh, check this. Let's see modern doorways. Astral projection, partial or complete separation of soul and soul travel, practiced by many involved in spiritual of various forms, doorways to astral projection is various forms of meditation. Human spirit can travel to virus places aided by a dynamic spirit. So if you have a dream where you're traveling around or flying around the place, you may be encountering demon spirits that are giving you that opportunity to do that, okay? The other is agori, fortune telling by means of interpreting omens. Uh, for example, some people live by signs, don't they? Yeah. They got up in the morning, yeah. two knives were crossed. That means I don't go out today. You know? <laughs> oh, uh, I want good luck today when I go and bet on the horses and touch the wood. You know what I'm saying? You know? Okay? Amulet. What is an amulet? An object said to give magical powers. There should not be anything around your neck. You shouldn't have any good luck charms. If you've got a charm bracelet, you need to get rid of it. That charm bracelet with all the charms, all those charms are amulets. All of them. That is not astrology, fortune telling, based on a supposed influence of the position of the sun, moon, stars and planets. Apport, the appearance of, or disappearance of physical objects. Automatically handwriting, words written without awareness of conscious effort, i.e. genomically inspired, without charming or enchantment. Clairvoyance, hearing voices not normally heard. Uh, clairvoyance is diagnosis of disease apart from science. Clairvoyance, discerning the things not normally present to the senses. Uh, crystal gazing, fortune telling by means of balls, mirrors, crystals. Somebody could have given you a crystal. You know these crystal, this is a nice present from you, from me. It's a sign of our love. You need to get rid of it. Could be a spell on it. Crystals, do you see? Crystals, they use those in fortune tellings and everything like that. What about the ones that you buy at the science museum? Which one? Well, that's different. I'm telling you, know, what I'm saying, let's say you know somebody who's a bit wacko and they give you a crystal. You understand? This crystal, I love you, darling. This is for you. Take it home. Every time you look at it, remember me. Come on, anybody can be uh, made, you know. Buying a crystal, Joshua, for, for uh, uh, you know. Yes, the man got me there. It's fine, but you know, having a big tongue hanging around your neck saying, when I go out, this makes me feel better. Do you know what I'm saying? It's totally different, you know. I mean, come on. Okay? What about paperweight? Yeah, well, again, that's fine. You know, if it's given to you as a paperweight only, yeah. Again, you need balance and you need prayer. Not everything is wrong, don't get me wrong. But what I am saying, you need to look around and check them. Yeah, well, I'm saying I'd rather get rid of it. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's go to astrology and tell them fortune telling. Fortune telling has some present influence. As I read that already, didn't I? Mm -hmm. uh, where am I? Number eight, am I? Nine. 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 So, catamonacy, fortune telling by means of cards related to tarot cards. Uh, also, palm is can, can not also reading your palm. Like some people will do it fun, you know, they might even say, yeah, you have six children. <laughs> Look at that line there. Well, that's that's it. Listen, it's easy to do it because it doesn't harm, it's not hurting you, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But actually what you're doing in reality is you are now delving into the spirit realm. Because you are reading the palm of somebody. Palm is true. You know that? You see? Okay, so number nine, uh, number ten, karma, also palmist, something like that. Divination, another name for fortune telling. Number twelve, fetishes, spiritual embodiment in a natural object, e.g. stone, doll, tree. Like some people are fetishes, like they, uh, you know, they will not, I, I can speak here, yeah, they will not sleep with their wife or husband unless they're wearing shoes. It's a fetish, or some people will not go out with girls unless they've got long hair. Do you know what I'm saying? Or some, like some men will yeah. only like Chinese women. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with that lie. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing that, but so it can go become a fetish. Do you understand? Yeah. It can become an obsession. Obsession. To the point where people even will murder. Like as uh, Peter Suckley, he would only murder prostitutes. He had a fetish with prostitutes. That was a spirit there, you know. And when he got caught, he said, God told me to do it. Again, you see, the Lord told me. The Lord told me. The Lord told me to kill all those prostitutes. That's why we need to know what Lord we're listening to. You know? Okay. What about uh, uh, fetish, uh, hypertromous? If I don't get these words right, please forgive me. Divination by viewing images in water. That's like a wishing well. You know these wishing wells and water spirits, for example? Some of you are going to be shocked here. Can anyone tell me a couple of water spirits? You're not going to like what you're going to hear, especially some of you girls. The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid is one of the biggest water spirits. Mm. Mermaids, you know, dolphins that are used in uh, worship practices. Remember, the Dagon God was half fish, half man. Why do you not want to worship a God that's half fish, half man? Because he can't make his mind up if he wants to walk or swim. <laughs> Why would you serve a God that doesn't even know what it's doing? <laughs> Think about it. All these Indian gods, half elephant, half person, or six hands with an elephant trunk. What kind of god is that? Doesn't even know who he is. I'm an elephant, I'm a human. India has loads of uh, okay. worshipping images. Okay, so let's quickly go through. Incarnation, incarnation does not exist. Do never believe that you're going to get another life. No, that is a lie from Satan himself. Incarnation is a big, this is your only life, get it right this time. You ain't coming back as a cockroach. You ain't coming back, you know, as uh, uh, an, a, 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 an ugly girl or a beautiful woman if you make a mistake in this world. That's a complete lie. Actually, incarnation is one of the most ingenious ways to deceive a soul. Because do you know why? You don't really take your life seriously as far as salvation because you believe you're coming back again to try again. You see? It's a very ingenious uh, way. In in Cupus, a male demon that has sexual intercourse with humans. This is very common in people who have been bewitched. This can happen, by the way. I know it sounds crazy, but there are people who are just so <coughs> lustful. It's like the minute you come into their presence, you can feel the lust there. Do you understand? It's because they're possessed with that spirit. You know, there's some people who just want to go to bed with everybody. They do. I know it's shocking, yeah? You don't, I don't like to hear that passage, but it's true, honestly. And you have to be careful with that. Okay, magic, a means of in, in, incantation, charms, witchcraft, metaphysics, study of knowledge and other order of spirits, pneumology, an occult practice which interprets numbers for fortune telling, uh, a Luigi board, a board with letters of alphabet on it, which is designed to communicate with spirits of the dead, Oracle, a revelation or message for a supernatural thought or medium. Uh, Paxcology, study of dynamic activity. Pendulum, divine rod, a fortune to, to locate uh, objects unseen. Harness, divination by analysts of lines, uh, uh, lines and shapes on the human hand. I'm just talking about that. 
psychonicosis, I think that is moving objects by use of the mind and thought patterns. Phrenology, dividing or analysis based on the bumps and structures of the skull. <coughs> Radonomity, casting sticks into the air and interpreting omens from the way in which they fall in the ground. Seance, a meeting of spirits and spiritualists. Sorcery, a form of magic which attempts to control or direct spirits. Telepathy, tele, tele, telepathy. Telepathy. telepathy, thought reading or communication with others from a distance. Talismans, that's di uh, divining by charms. Like you just said, sister, at the back, why is the gargles, gargles outside, they are talismans. They are supposed to ward away evil spirits, but actually they are bringing in evil spirits. You don't need an evil demon to ward away evil demons. Think about it, common sense will even tell you that. Do you think that the evil demons are going to stop? to come into your house if you have statues of evil demons outside the house. Actually, in reality, you're welcoming them in. You're welcoming them to come in. This is why, to me, uh, when I wasn't a Christian, I didn't understand that too, sister. I thought, what is this? This is weird. These churches should be places where these don't exist. But as I got born again and studied the Bible, they understood. I understood clearly, because they don't know the Bible. They don't, they, they don't know, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm, I'm just being honest. So, whoever built those cathedrals, why would you put statues of demons and gargoyles outside? We don't need any talisman to help us. We have Jesus' blood. Amen. And if you prayed the blood of Jesus upon your house, man, I tell you right now, every demon that walks, he will go the, the long way around. He won't come by your house. Because the light is so bright, you cannot look at it. It's like he's walking down all these dark, dark uh, things, and then when he sees you, oh, it's like that, you know, he has to go all the way around. <clears throat> Amen. Now, we need to be balanced, by the way. If we commit sin, don't think it's all denomic. Do you understand? You need to be careful, yeah? Because we see as humans, we will commit sin. But, you know, but you need to be watch out what we are doing here. The above list is by no means exhaustive, however its purpose is to expose the work of darkness and to educate people to ensure that they are aware of denomic doorways. Many people have been seduced by fortune telling and its common practice in the life of many, however. Those involved are ignorant of the consequences of denomic activity in their lives. As a result of their involvement, in many cases, strong denomic covenants have been made with a person's life that will need to be broken. So, your lives at the moment, even though you're born again, if you've ever had your palm read, fortune told, any, in the altar tonight, pray that God will break that covenant. Hallelujah. Jesus name. Pray. Just to you and God. You don't need, you know, just pray. Just say, Lord, I remember, I used to read my horoscopes. I, please, if there's any curse put on me or any covenant in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I break it right now in Jesus' name. And it will be broken instantly. But you need to pray that, not me for you. Mm -hmm. Because if I have to pray it for you, and you don't pray it, in reality you're saying, I don't want it broken. Mm -hmm. You've got to pray that. It's got to come from the heart, isn't it? It sure does, yeah. Okay, any questions at the moment? Five more minutes and we're going to have to be done. We're not going to get all this done. I thought two hours would be enough, but it just isn't. But you can carry on to the end. It is important to note that not everybody is suited for deliverance ministry. Exactly. However, all true believers can cast out devils according to Mark 16. We read that. They shall cast out devils. This area of ministry is extremely demanding, can sap your spiritual energy. It is essential that an air of caution is voiced to anyone who, want, who would want to involve in the ministry. That's why I wanted you all to register, because before we end, we're going to pray for everyone that, on that register that Amen. God will protect you. Amen. I don't want you to go rushing out here and casting out demons. Amen. Unless you're forced with it. Okay? But remember, when we start talking about the enemy, we get his attention. He don't want us to talk about it. We got his attention today, didn't we? Amen. You know, we don't want it. You know, so we need to be covered by the blood of Jesus. And when you study this later in your house, you pray first. Pray and say, Lord, cover me right now with the blood of Jesus as I study this with the scriptures. Okay? Okay, so uh, I would strongly commend the following prequisites is to person should have a healthy prayer life and relationship with God. In other words, don't go casting out devils if you don't have a prayer life or fasting. You get it. Just don't even do it. Number two, person should be accustomed to fasting and sometimes for long periods. 
Number three, person seeks the gifts of the Spirit, especially word of knowledge and discerning of spirits. Number four, person should never operate on their own but work with someone with experience. And number five, person should never pray for members of the opposite sex, sex on their own but should always have someone of the same sex present. I remember a pastor who uh, got a phone call from a woman who had a spirit of lust. She had a spirit of lust. And she said, Pastor, I need your help right now. I'm going through a tough time. And the pastor said, where are you? I'm in the Holiday Inn. Could you come and help me? And he said, he went. He went and helped her. And they ended up sleeping together. Why? Because the spirit of lust, right, targeted him. He should never have gone to a hotel room on his own to pray for a woman. He fell straight into that trap. But he repented and, and recovered himself. And he used it in a testimony. But the point is you need to be careful. However, what I'm about ready to say, I'm not, please don't take this wrong. If, if there's sexual activity, it doesn't mean it's always from the devil. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But in that case, it was definite. Mm -hmm. He'd been trapped and set up because he just got a phone call out of the blue. Do you understand? Somebody he never met, you know, called him. I said, hello, uh, I, I've seen you uh, uh, preaching or whatever, and I have a problem. I've got a problem right now. Please help me. Where, where, where are you then? I'm in the Holiday Inn. Can you come down now? Wasn't even a church member, didn't even know. Pastor went down. I prayed for someone at my old church, and he was a male, and that was the last time I did it because he phoned the police on me, and I had a detective on my door. Oh, brother go. Mark knows that I was, it was, was completely demonic, bro. Yeah. Where is brother Mark? You need to be careful. Of course, we, one of us members, we know each other, there's a little bit more lenience. Even then, you should still take still somebody careful, with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are emergency cases, though. I'm not, you've got to be balanced. You know, if one of, my, uh, one of the sisters here that I know a lot really well called and said, I really need prayer right now, I'm, I'm in the street, meet me in the street, I would go and pray for them. Even if I was on my own, I tell you why. It's you may say, "Well, you're setting yourself up." Well, if I know they're a church member, there's a difference than a stranger. Yes. Yeah. You know, some stranger you've never met. That's a back to you. Eh? Yeah. Entertain strangers. Not always. <laughs> Not always. Eh? Not always entertain strangers. No. Sometimes people don't like to talk about this subject. They think, "Oh, it's wrong." Listen, but we need to know because we need to know the devil is tricky. Very tricky, man. He is. He's sly and he's tricky. Okay. Very quick types of deliverance and then we're finished. Typically, there are two main types of deliverance, i.e. deliverance of place and deliverance of people, whether oppression or, or, uh, or possession. Let us first deal with deliverance of places. How can a, pl a place be haunted, a place be or infiltrated, infiltrated, infiltrated by evil spirits? There are various reasons, some of which are listed below. A house or a place can be haunted by an evil spirit after a person has died and a demonic spirit takes root in that place. Where an evil spirit has been sent by means of a curse to guard a place or send on a mission to cause harm to someone living in a particular place. Where a place has been used to worship demons or Satan or a place that has been dedicated to a particular god. Right, we're going to stop there. When we first got this church, I spent the night here going around and laying my hands and anointing every room in here. Now, can I be honest? Does anybody feel, when you stay here at night, some of you say, do you feel anything bad? Anybody? No, because if there were any spirits here, they're already gone. Because we've anointed every room, we've consecrated every room, and by the blood of Jesus, any demons that were resident in here have already gone. Amen. Now, I know this works because in our house, and I admit, me and Joy made a mistake, we all make mistakes. In our house in the Philippines, we used to rent it out. And whenever you've got somebody looking after your house and renting it out, that person who's looking after the house, they aren't checking what kind of people they are because they're an unbeliever themselves. And we got two demons in our house. We had a woman with long hair and we had a midget, a little midget like this. We knew they were there because we had a service a bit like this. There was a praise and worship, and there was the pastor's wife who's got a strong discernment, and she saw the midget and the woman going like this. The reason they were doing that is because we were worshiping the Lord, and they hated the worship of God. They hate, you see. And so she came up to me. She goes, Pastor, I want to tell you in your house, lad. And then we know, and we, you know, we had three renters before that. One of them was crazy. 
Another guy uh, we only found out after, an old man with a young teenager girl. Uh, he had uh, Viagra and uh, no, it's true though, during the process he died. Do you know what I'm saying? And then another one, and we never knew all this, but anyway, but we recognized there was something wrong in the house. So what we did is we went around every single room and we anointed it and prayed the blood of Jesus upon it and the demons were gone. Do you know how we knew the demons were gone? Because that evening, uh, on the road we are, there's a road, there's about 10 houses on you know, each side, and all the dogs started barking, but there was nobody walking on the road. You know in the Philippines, when you walk down the road, all the dogs start barking, but there was nobody on the road, totally nobody, and yet all the dogs started going, ruff, 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 all the way along every house like that. And the Lord said to me, do you see? They're leaving. Because dogs, they can perceive demons. Yeah. Yeah. And they left, the woman and the midget, they left, because they were cast out. And that's why you need to go to your home, especially the person who owns the house, not the children as much, but the owner of your house. You need to go home and consecrate your house to God. Because you could have a depressive spirit living in your room, and that's why you get depressed all the time. Because you come to the church, have you ever noticed, you come to the church, you get on fire, you go home, and you become depressed. And yet that fire should continue in the house. It's because the spirit comes on you, doesn't get in you because it can't, but it's like, uh, uh, uh. And again, you need to come back and get lifted up again. Any questions? I'm sorry we couldn't finish it, but you've got the handout to finish it yourself. Any questions? No question is silly. Anybody? Before we end. No, I guess. Go on. No, you don't need to be a pastor, but you do need to get all your man be, uh, uh, family members in it together. Yes. Because one of them could be cursing your house with something in the house. And so if you go around and consecrate it, the devil could be following you and unconsecrating it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you're not all together in it. So you all need to sit down. You all Listen, the family in Brighton did this. And I really commend them. They were very young Christians, but they Amen. did it. Yeah. They sat down and said, we need to sort this out. And then they started to pray, and God started to reveal to them what needed to be removed out of their house. Yeah. They found videos of Harry Potter hidden away and all kinds of stuff. And when it all went, the Spirit of God moved in their house. And not only did it move in their house, they became the house that had the Bible study, which now has become the place where there's been a church put in Brighton. Amen. Now don't tell me that's amazing. Once you consecrate and dedicate your house to God, God can move in your house. Amen. You know, if you don't believe me, I will tell you this right now. I'll tell you. The children of Israel were losing a war. <coughs> they were losing and losing and losing, and they didn't know why. And the reason why is because somebody stole some accursed stuff from Jericho. And it was hidden. And the reason why they lost thousands of men because of that, but once they got rid of that accursed thing, they won. Some of us, we just don't win in the battle with, uh, with God. We keep losing, that's why we keep getting depressed, why we can't witness to people, why we're not enjoying the Holy Ghost, whatever. It's because we have something that is hindering us having the victory. And if you can't face that fact to yourself, you will never have the victory. You need to be grown up and say, God, you need to show me why your spirit is hindered to fill me and bless me and give me joy. And then God will reveal it to you because God don't lie. Amen. Jesus said, uh, well, the, part of the apostle Paul said, if you need wisdom, ask. And the wisdom is to ask what is hindering your growth. Amen. And God will reveal it to you. And some of it will be shocking. I tell you, you'll be like, really, Lord? It's that. You say, yes. And then you'll get rid of it and you'll feel more you know, freedom. And as you go, as you get rid of more and more and more, once the whole house is totally cleansed, it's like God is in your house. People come to your house and feel God in your home. Yes. We are in our house. We've had this happen. You've witnessed to it, Joshua. We, a sister, uh, uh, Chris is not here. Her mom's employer Karen do you remember Karen this is an unbelieving woman came over to the house sat in our living room and started weeping before we even opened the Bible 
she was weeping and crying and crying and crying. Do you know what she turned around? She said, I just feel something in this house. What she felt was the Spirit of God. And then we started to give her a Bible study and she was healed of cancer, breast cancer. Why did that happen? Because that house is dedicated to God. And remember, open door. They said, when you open the door, you let the demons come in. Our door is bolted shut for any demonic activity. In other words, come through. Come and look at my videos, all of you. Come go. Look. I don't mind. I'll bring you up when we go. You have to strap to the top. We don't have a lot of space in the car. <laughs> but you won't find any demonic material in my house at all. And if you do, it will be because Joshua's hidden it under his bed. <laughs> 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 But it won't be there because I put it there. The reason being is because I want victory all the time. And I don't want to be like the army of Israel, which brought an unclean thing into the house. So, some of you may be doing it ignorantly right now. It's okay. You've had a chance now. You've got a lesson now. It's time to go home. When you go home, you have to search and ask God to reveal it. Okay, any other questions, anybody? Right, let's all stand and just uh, dismiss.